On today's show, the Audi e-tron aces IIH crash tests in the US and becomes the first EV to get the coveted top safety pick plus award. Supercharging is now free again for new Model S and Model X orders and a body mod that means you'll never need a key for your Tesla Model 3 again. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi folks, welcome to another Roundup from the world of clean cars and energy. You probably don't know this, but I'm filming this in a new studio, so it may sound a little different. Welcome to the new studio. The Audi e-tron electric SUV has become the first electric car ever to earn the coveted IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus Award from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. It's only given to cars which ace all of the crash tests, as well as offer advanced safety features like automatic emergency braking. In its test, the e-tron earned itself praise from the IIHS for its honeycombed battery pack safety structure and LED matrix headlights, among other features. Snapping at the e-tron's heels is the Tesla Model 3, which is currently still undergoing its IIHS testing. Mercedes-Benz has confirmed that its stands at the Frankfurt Motor Show will be heavy on plug-ins, with several new plug-in hybrid variants of existing vehicles due to debut there. At the same time, the automaker says that we'll see a concept electric sedan showcased that I assume will be either the EQS or EQE depending on its size. Also present in Frankfurt on the Mercedes-Benz stand will be the production version of the EQV electric minivan, the concept for which we saw in March in Geneva. Supercharging for free used to be a perk of Tesla ownership. Then Tesla made it a perk only available through the Tesla referral program for new car orders. Then it did away with it completely for new cars, even killing the privilege for certified pre-owned Teslas that were once grandfathered in with free supercharging for life. Well, now it's back, except this time it's only on brand new Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X cars, suggesting that Tesla is looking for a way to boost Model S and X sales in times when people just want to buy a Model 3 instead. BMW has confirmed that it's bringing its global induction charging pilot project to the US. Initially launched in Germany in 2018, the program will launch in certain parts of California, offering wireless inductive charging to customers buying the 530e plug-in hybrid sedan. While you can't deny the convenience of pulling up parking and having the car charge itself without you needing to plug it in, the reality of inductive charging is a little less rosy. At the moment, the system is limited to 3.3 kilowatts of peak power transfer, which means it's probably just faster and easier for now to just plug in. A couple of weeks ago, Ford teased a video of an electric F-150 pickup prototype towing more than 1 million US tons of rail cars and pickup trucks. At the time, lots of you questioned if it was really Ford tech under the hood or Rivian tech, as Ford had made a sizable investment in the startup earlier this year and said it would build a vehicle alongside Rivian that would wear a Ford badge. We'd all assumed that that would be a pickup truck, but as Ford CEO Jim Hackett suggested to Motor Trend this week, it might not be. While he didn't specifically state what the vehicle would be, hints were dropped that Rivian's project with Ford might be a full-size electric SUV built by Rivian in normal Illinois. When it comes to electric big rigs, Tesla's all-electric semi might get the most of the online attention, but this week, rival Freightliner beat it to the punch by celebrating the production of its first two Freightliner E-Cascadia big rigs. The two trucks are already on their way to fleets in a research and development program fleet. So while the claims from Daimler about having these trucks in the hands of customers are true, they are still technically limited production test fleet vehicles for now. He is hoping that they do lead to a series production version very soon. It was only revealed a month or so ago, but BMW has said it already has more than 45 
1,000 registrations from customers for the 2020 Mini Cooper SE electric vehicle. While it's fantastic to see so many people engaged and excited about another new electric car, I should note that the registrations aren't legally binding orders or even placed deposits, as BMW hasn't yet taken any money from anyone for the vehicle. Nevertheless, it is a great thing to see a car which many criticised for being too limited in its range get some serious interest from the general public. That means more people buying electric cars. The Jaguar I-PACE EV hasn't been selling all that well in the US, partly because of the exchange rate and its subsequent sticker price, but also because of its limited appeal and subpar specifications when compared to the offerings of Tesla. This week, to help boost those sales, we learn that Jaguar is working with dealers to target Tesla owners specifically, luring them into an I-PACE with a special $3,000 additional cash-on-hood sweetener. Interestingly, you don't actually have to trade in your Tesla to make use of the deal, you just have to own one. It'll be interesting to see who bites. Proterra has been a leader in electric buses for many years now, and I see its buses on a regular basis in and around the Pacific Northwest, serving many duties on many different bus routes. But now Proterra has decided not only to sell its own electric buses, but to license the technology behind those buses to other bus companies and commercial vehicle manufacturers under a program that it's calling Proterra Powered. It will essentially enable many commercial vehicle manufacturers the chance to go electric without spending millions on R&D to do it. Plus, it's an extra revenue stream for Proterra. Good job! Porsche has officially confirmed that the Taycan electric car will get its production premiere at the Frankfurt Motor Show on September 4th. And as a consequence, we've seen an increase in coverage around the car, including from our very good friends at Fully Charged, whose Johnny Smith became the first journalist in the world to get behind the wheel, taking it out on a closed track and executing multiple 0 to 200 kph sprints to showcase the car's abilities to continually deliver high performance. The video is fantastic. I'm only a little bit jealous and you should totally check it out after we're done here. Kudos to the whole fully charged team on this one. It was fab. And finally, while you can use your smartphone or buy a standard Tesla key fob for your Model 3, the credit card sized valet card that ships with your car is a little bulky. And with all the tech inside the Model 3, I'm sure that many people have wished that they don't ever need a key card at all. They can just walk up and have the car open. So I suspect that was the motivation behind software developer, maker and cosplayer Amy Dd's decision to encase the valet key for her Model 3 in medical grade polymer and then have it implanted in her right arm. Having had an injectable heart monitor put into my chest, all I can say is, ow. Although her implant, ironically, installed by a body mod specialist called Pineapple, hacking joke there, was actually a lot smaller than my own personal cyber implant, but still. Oof. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, then please do send it our way. Make sure that you also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you're at it, if you haven't yet, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy and simple to make the change. And if you do, you're going to be helping New Zealand reach a zero emission future. I'll be back soon with more episodes. But until then, thanks for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.